A warm welcome back. We now bring you our regular feature, Tech Base, on Fridays here on The Full View. We have such a phenomenal, creative youngster in our studio tonight. 21 years. His name is Giggs Hole, and he is one of the first 3D visual artists in the country. He now brings us his story, as well as some of his paintings that we will be able to see in 3D grasses being brought to life. Now, remember, you can send us your comments on hashtag the full view. Please do make use of that handle and send us your comments. We really would appreciate that. Giggs, tell me, you were born in a village in Limpopo. You then ended up in Tembisa. You also went to St. John's School in Houghton. You were one of the first to obtain matric results in your family and also to attend a private school. So tell us um, a bit more about your early years before we delve into your very exciting project that you are tackling now. Nice. Um, so I was actually born in Tembisa Hospital and then I was sent back to Limpopo to live with my grandmother and my mother. Um, so growing up in Limpopo, we didn't really have much to do except for obviously going to the river, collecting water, and just playing around as kids. So being kids, um, creativity just came about easily for me. Uh, I used to go down to the river, collect heaps of clay, and then would make like tractors and like little toys and little sculptures. And during that time, I didn't know that that was art. But uh, for me and my friends, it was a bit of a competition. Who can make the best house? Who can make the best tractor? And um, pretty much who could create? And so creation was life. Creation was a daily thing for me. I then, uh, my dad worked at a power station in Kelvin Power, just here but next to the airport. So at Kelvin Power, um, my dad then put me through primary school here in Kempton Park because he felt that it was better for me to come to school here in Gauteng. So then living in Gauteng, I then went to Creslon Primary School. And then in grade four, we started art classes. So then that's when I had put a name to what I was doing. Mm. For me, it was just... What you, what you loved and what was a passion for you. Mm. Yeah. Love and passion. So now I learned that this was art. And then I learned that, hey, there's different forms of art. Mm. There's paintings, there's drawings, there's sculpting, and there's music too, and performances. So then I, that really, really interested me because I knew that, hey, I want to sort of dive into every single piece of uh, medium. So then I finished, my finished off my grade four year, um, did well in art. I got to grade six. Um, unfortunately, my dad then tells me that he <coughs> doesn't have enough funding to put me through uh, high school. So then. Now you have a 12 year old who's uh, faced with such a big challenge of mm. not being able to get um, secondary education. And I was scared at the time. And because all my friends were going to high school, um, I wanted to go to high school because I loved school. And I was really good at school. So then I then went off to initiation school in my, uh, in when I was 12. And by God's grace, when I came back from initiation school, one of my teachers in my primary school, Mrs. Sargent, had uh, an application form for me. And w that was the SSP scholarship form. So before you went t off to do a scholarship, what did the initiation process teach you? Because as I speak to you, I hear that you've had a whole lot of challenges reaching this point. What were those challenges and what did your initiation teach you? I think for me personally, I learned to reflect. It taught me about reflection. It taught me about myself. Uh, it taught me about learning and patience and planning for the future. And because when I came back, I knew that I'm still not going to get into high school. So what was my plan? And then when I got back and I had this SSP form with me, um, I was one month late. Uh, but my mom said that, hey, look, let's put in the application. And it was 250 at the time. And at the time, we really didn't have, we don't have much at home. So my mom took our last because she believed and she had faith. So then I put in the application, sent it in a month late. Uh, SSP writes to me and says, yeah, even though you're a month later, uh, please come in for our uh, interviews and as well as um, exams. 
So then in grade six, uh, 3,000 students had applied. They wrote exams, interviews. And then after that, in the grade seven year, they picked 100 out of the 3,000 students. And we do know that you were 25 out of those 3,000, mm -hmm. then a cut to 100 that were chosen. We also know that you worked with the acclaimed William Kentridge. Now, um, we know that you've got great opportunities despite the fact that you have been challenged. Mm -hmm. Let's now move to the current project that you are working on. Can you explain all of this? Okay, so the current project that I'm working on, I started, this, uh, started planning this in 2012. So my art teacher, Leslie McKenzie at St. John's College, challenged all the students to come up with new concepts, new ideas. I wanted to build a sculpture at the time, but I didn't have uh, money or I didn't have the resources and the skills to build a big sculpture. But I knew that I wanted to wow people for when my matric exams, art exams came about. So then I sat down on the drawing board, I did some research about sculptures and then words like 3D, anaglyphs, stereoscopes, space, and, um, and illusion and deception. So then words like stereoscopes and anaglyphs really interested me, so then I did some research on that, and then I taught myself how to make 3D movies. Uh, and then by my matric, I made a 3D movie and I realized that, wow, okay, this is great. And now that I have it on a TV screen, I want to move that into paper, so paper base. So what you have here is one of the works that uh, were made this year. All right. So the series is called Tembisa, uh, inspiration from my township. And the reason why I've decided to call the series Tembisa was for the fact that I've been in Europe for the past year, exhibiting my works in Italy and as well as France. And then um, I met my partner there, who I actually co-own a gallery in South Africa right now, in New Don Fontaine. And we are technically the youngest gallery owners in the world. He's 20 years old, I'm 21 years old. And then we opened up the gallery with my exhibition called Tembisa, because Tembisa, because of where I grew up, and Tembisa because of promise. All right, so what I see in front of me, I can clearly see the picture without my 3D glasses on. But let me explain to you what I am witnessing when I put on my 3D glasses. So to me, if I can um, associate it to something or say how, what I see in front of me, it's exactly like a 3D TV mm. or when you go to the movies and you watch a 3D movie. So I even, it, it even feels as if it is capable of moving. Yes, and that was the whole point. So I, I created films first and then I, I needed to take the concept of moving images and put it on a flat piece of mm. paper. And I, a lot of people thought that was a crazy idea. So then, I mean, through test prints and test paintings, I managed to develop a technique where I can have the flat image, and when you put on the glasses, the images move with you if you move around. So you move closer, some works move towards you. If you move back, some works move back. And then with some artworks, I can make images go inside, to the, inside the paper, and then some images pop outside of the paper, and then some images float. And if you blink with one eye, you can see another image. If you blink with another eye, you see a different image. So it's pretty much an amazing interactive piece of artwork, and which is a masterpiece. And I, the reason why I created it this way was because I realized that sometimes people look at artworks and really don't study mm. and look into what has to be said. Because with every single work, with every single creative, everybody has a story to tell. And with Gig's Hollow Art, it's about telling untold African stories. And through these works, you question. Now, Gig's Hollow, tell me, you know you've just spoken about speaking, um, telling untold stories. We do know that you have an exhibition coming up soon at Mabonen. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, so my Tembisa exhibition, Tembisa, uh, is inspired by the fact that I made a promise to myself at 16 that when I, when I leave high school, I want to become Africa's number one visual artist. So then the plan was I was going to do that at 35. And then when I couldn't get into university at 18, I then decided that, hey, I'm going to step into the art world and show everybody what I'm with. And it's working out slowly. So Tembisa, the exhibition, is a promise that I've kept to myself to own a gallery, to help other younger people showcase in my gallery, and help people's voices be heard. And Gaslamp, our gallery, which is, which is in New Dawnfontein, is um, 
uh, a gallery that wants to shine the light for young creatives out there. I think you've definitely placed uh, your mark and your foot in the, 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 the visual art industry. We graced by one of South Africa's um, first 3D visual artist. He's only 21 years old, so please support him and go and see his exhibition at Maboneng. That's it for Tech Base tonight. If you want to view this feature and all our other interviews, go to sabcnews.com. Facebook and Twitter. And to send us your comments, please do so on The Full View. Stay with us, we'll take a short break.